Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the System.io podcast with me, Natasha Pinto. Join us as we discuss all things digital marketing and entrepreneurship. Here, online business owners take us on their journey, how they went from zero to launch. Today, our guest is Stuart Gould. He is a digital marketing consultant, YouTuber, and small business specialist. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Hopefully I can provide a bit of value to everyone. <laughs> I think you definitely can. Um, we were excited to have you as well. And I like to start off the conversation with the beginning. So can you give us a little bit of your history? So what did you think you were going to be doing with your life and what put you on the path to where you are now? Actually, my partner asked me that question literally the other day, and I couldn't remember exactly what I wanted to be when I was older. <laughs> um, I did always want to do my own thing though that's something I've always kind of known I've just wanted to go off and, and start my own thing whatever it was I wasn't sure what it was but I wanted to be yeah my own boss kind of thing um, from as yeah far a long time ago as far as I can remember um, but a bit of background with me is uh, I started off running a small consultancy in New Zealand Tauranga um, and we just focus on digital media and marketing. So I always talk about digital media and marketing together because it was all about creating content for clients as well as building websites um, and also helping them establish their online presence and really setting up you know, these brick and mortar businesses, service-based businesses. And, and the whole idea was helping them transition online and help them you know, stay relevant because a lot of these business owners had no website or it was a terrible website or had no kind of, um, strategy when it came to actually migrating online mm -hmm. um, and then yeah so got into that out of university pretty much um, so went straight into my own gig and yeah for, for two years it was just the the hustle the build it was a lot of cold calling and um, yeah it was it was a struggle and slowly I grew a clientele and started building systems around everything I was doing and then about probably about three years in, so it's been about two and a bit years now, um, I started a YouTube channel and the whole intention of that was to kind of help my clients kind of with a lot of online activities that they could do themselves. So for example, if I was setting up a business page on Facebook, I'd create a tutorial for them to watch and set it up themselves. And that way I was saving them time, I was saving them money. Um, and so it was, it was more of the, the the intention was to create these simple tutorials to help business owners execute a lot of these activities themselves. And then that kind of just started growing and we ended up generating, starting to generate a lot of leads through organically through YouTube. And that's kind of where we're positioned now as we focus a lot of our efforts on YouTube because it just generates so much traffic, so much interest and, and ultimately leads and, and um, acquisitions. So that's yeah i hope that answered your question yes. that's kind of where we're at today <laughs> oh, that's um a great one i think helping businesses uh, get themselves online is a really important thing you're right there's so many brick and mortar businesses that were just not present or not making the best use of their online presence and especially with this COVID 19 pandemic there's they're forced to put themselves online there's no other way that they're going to reach their audience especially if they're stuck at home yeah. um absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. And then you spoke about one of the obstacles that people find quite difficult, especially when they're starting their business, this idea of cold calling. So how do you manage that? How do you make that a more comfortable experience? Because I think lots of people are very intimidated by the idea of just cold calling, randomly picking up the phone or even cold emails. Yeah, I was uh, probably don't take advice from me because when I first started cold calling, it was terrible mainly because I didn't really have the skills or the knowledge. Um, I wasn't at that level where I was confident in what I was trying to sell, which is, you know, these digital media and marketing packages, website packages, helping them with their local SEO or SEO, or SEM, different forms of online marketing and media. And so during the initial two years of cold calling, I was still learning. So I was cold calling and trying to grow the business, but I was also still trying to learn at the same time. Because I studied strategy uh, at university, but none of that, they didn't really teach anything about uh, online marketing or anything like that. It was, it was predominantly just 
yeah, business strategy, the macro kind of business strategy. Um, so while I was cold calling, uh, I was kind of just, I, I pushed myself out there mainly because I just did not want to work for someone else. Like I mentioned in the beginning, yeah. I've always just wanted to do my own thing. So I knew I had to make it work. And like anything, it gets easier. And I think for me, I realized what was working and I'd start kind of building systems. I'd build uh, kind of like structures in place with what I was trying to sell. And it did get easier. I found for me, it was a lot easier to approach business owners um, rather than cold calling through the phone. So I did a bit of cold calling through the phone, but most of it was actually walking around businesses and, and talking to them about what they're currently doing with their marketing and then helping them from, yeah, with that, that kind of, um, yeah, that strategy. And I just, I guess, slowly got better, but yeah, I, I wasn't the best cold caller. So if you got whoever's listening and, and they're thinking about cold calling, look, you can probably do a lot better than how I first started. And it's just repetition, practice, and you just get better. And you have to fail to learn. So just give it a go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, cold calling is, it's, a, it's an intimidating thing. And your idea of going straight to the business and directly to the business and talking to them about what they already have in place is a great idea, I think if you can combine that with cold calling, kind of research a little bit who you're calling and say, hey, listen, I've seen you're doing this. Why don't you try this? I could probably help you with that. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's a good point. Yeah, you definitely need to do a little bit of due diligence beforehand to know who you're talking to. Um, and, and that way you, you, you know exactly kind of where they're at, especially with their online infrastructure um, and what they're currently doing. So yeah, definitely doing that research beforehand helps. <laughs> yeah, I think it also makes you feel a bit more confident. You know what you're talking absolutely. about. Absolutely, absolutely. And then <clears throat> can you give us a, a bit of a comparison of how you started out in online business to where you're sitting today, like a ballpark figure, and then how long it's been this journey? Okay, yep, yep. So all up, it's been... Uh, so out of university it's nearly oh, it's been about five years now so all up with starting my business here in New Zealand um, and then growing it uh, through different activities um, YouTube's our main strategy at the moment for driving traffic and and driving leads um, so five years definitely when I first started we were predominantly relying on one income source and that was really just a it'd be a big project so it'd be um, for a small business, setting up a website, then setting up there, maybe Google My Business, doing some SEO stuff, and then engaging in some Google ads. And that was usually the package we'd start off with. And so it'd kind of be, you know, we might get two or three clients a month. So it was, it was a bulk payment um, coming in, but we, we didn't have the systems in place to generate different types of income or different, uh, different channels of income through the business that I was doing. And then, yeah, again, just through really realizing what else we could offer with that initial package, for example, ongoing maintenance um, with the website, so web hosting, um, offering email services as well, and then kind of managing ads. So we do a lot of Google ads management, content management through different channels, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and then, and then YouTube as well. And so when we started doing that, we, we started focusing more on, on leverage and creating uh, more passive forms of income through our business. Um, so when I first started, so the first two years was honestly probably, uh, oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was probably low. It was definitely not six figures at all um, for the first two years. I was probably earning just under what I would have been earning if I went straight into a job from university. So probably around 45K um, New Zealand dollars, which is probably like 30K US dollars. Yeah, so not much. Um, and then as the business scaled and started growing, it's definitely been exponential since COVID. So I feel real bad saying that because a lot of people are like, oh no, like our businesses, you know, a lot of people have had it pretty rough and it's been a stressful time with a lot of small businesses um, and, and just people losing their jobs and things like that. But, but for us in the nature of our business, because people wanted to transition online um, and adopt these different online strategies, uh, that kind of our business just blew up. 
um, the YouTube channel blew up and that just generated a lot of leads and we just built a big business. We had to hire people from different countries to help out with just all the different areas of, of, of um, kind of marketing uh, activities and strategies and, and web design and things that we were doing at the time. And so now, yeah, we're in a position where we're high six figures. So very high six figures. Awesome. So we're, we're, we're breaching seven. We're hoping to hit seven probably because January, February, March is our best time of the year. So hopefully around, probably around March we'll hit seven figures, awesome. which is exciting. Yeah, which is really exciting. So um, yeah, and it's just been growing exponentially in the last two years, mainly because of COVID. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to the future and, and we're just planning different ways that we can help our audience as well as our clients. And we're moving into more education now as well as execution. So we do a lot of execution for clients, but we're also focusing on education because it's something we can leverage and build and create that kind of residual income. And I think you shouldn't feel bad that you are doing so well out of COVID because you're doing so well because you are helping the people who are struggling because of this. So I think, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's more, more you know, your close group of friends and those you know that have lost their jobs and, and maybe aren't interested in starting a business. So they're looking for other jobs and it's been quite stressful. But definitely um, this, this, I guess, didn't have to happen, but it was going to happen. And it was going to force small business owners uh, to make a change and to adopt new ways to market. They had to transition online and it was inevitable. Um, so it was, yeah, it was inevitable that this was going to happen, unfortunately. Um, but now a lot of business owners are aware of what COVID can do or what a lockdown can do. Um, and they need to be online in some shape or form. Yeah, definitely. And then because you are a small business expert and so many members of our audience are just starting out, what do you think are some of the key ingredients for a successful online marketing strategy? For small businesses, uh, if you're trying to build an audience online um, and sell online, uh, if you're in... It really depends on the nature of your business. So if I was talking to say someone that was growing an e-commerce store, that strategy would be completely different to a consultancy or a service-based business trying to succeed online. Okay. Um, but I guess the fundamentals, we, we always look at email marketing because if any of your channels disappear, at least you've got an email list or, or an audience that you can continue building that relationship with. Um, and then you can continue selling to, um, educating, and kind of growing your brand. So we always look at the email list. And depending on the nature of their business and what they want to leverage in terms of online activities, uh, yeah, there's, there's just so many different strategies. We, we try and get small business owners into YouTube these days because we know the power of uh, yeah. YouTube organic and paid marketing through YouTube. So providing education, uh, content that's valuable, you build an audience that uh, can respect you um, and they want to buy from you eventually. Also paid advertising through YouTube is extremely powerful and effective at the moment, especially for online businesses, just building your brand awareness and also just driving those conversions. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're very heavy on the content. So yeah, again, it just depends on what the goal is for that business and then we tailor kind of a content and marketing strategy based on what they're trying to achieve okay so then i think maybe one of the biggest things that they need is like a clearly defined goal what they want in what niche and yeah absolutely it, you really need to understand exactly what their long-term goals are um, what they want to achieve with their brand with their business uh what areas are they looking to eventually um expand into and then kind of create an action plan around that. And the biggest thing is consistency. I know everyone always says consistency is key, but it truly is when it comes to building a brand. It's creating a schedule and it's committing to that schedule for one, two, three years. Um, and depending on the goals, then you revisit those every say six months, 12 months, or depending on how long those goals are. And then seeing if you're at the point that you wanna be, you're seeing if you're building that momentum in terms of your brand growth, um, in terms of the sales that you're generating. Um, yeah, so it, it really depends, like you said, on the vision of the business, um, the brand's objectives long-term. 
Okay, and then what about, uh, let's talk a little bit more about niches. So one of the niches that's seen quite a large, wouldn't like to say boom, because I think it's still going, is affiliate marketing. So with yes. affiliate marketing, do you think that it should be an add-on to a business or do you think that it can stand alone as a business model long-term? So with affiliate marketing, uh, we we don't work with other people that are in that space because we predominantly focus on and work with local small businesses. Um, but for us, we do a bit of affiliate marketing ourselves. We don't do any paid stuff. So we don't build funnels and drive conversions through affiliate um, kind of that, that structure. Um, but you definitely can. I mean, there's a lot of people that make a lot of money just yeah. focusing on affiliate marketing. So it's, it's a really great way to, um, yeah, to build a business. It's, for us, I see it as, again, because we are focusing on ways that we can generate um, additional income, but residual forms of income and affiliate marketing is one of those. Uh, when you can be passionate about a product or a service or some kind of digital product, then affiliate marketing works really well. Um, and yeah, and then, uh, yeah, there, there's obviously a lot of people that just focus purely on affiliate marketing um, and they just focus on, on, on products that they believe in and they just push the hell out of that. <laughs> um, and it, that's not what we do, but it, it can definitely work. I can definitely see the significance in that for those that just focus all their energy and efforts onto affiliate marketing and everything built around that. And then I think it is key that you are actually passionate about the products that you are promoting, because if you're just generically promoting, eventually, I think you might struggle to continue to get your audience excited about the product. Yeah, I think you, you do need to align with the product. A lot of people don't align with the product, which, I, which is, you know, I personally think it's, 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 it's just not morally right. Um, I think you really should be have that passion, that connection with the product in some form. Either you enjoy using the product yourself, um, you've seen value from that product, so that you can push it. Not just because it's got huge margins and you've got you know you get good commission from it. Um, you should, or, or else, yeah, it's harder to succeed because you can't commit to it um, long term if you don't have that kind of associate attachment to that product, um, to that company. So, but yeah, yeah. So having that passion definitely helps, <laughs> definitely yeah. helps. All right. And now a common question from our audience. Um, it's about traffic sources. So what do you think? Which are the best paid traffic channels? Paid traffic channels. Uh, at the moment, we're looking, we, we focus a lot on YouTube at the moment. Um, YouTube, uh, so sorry, Google ads, but focusing on video form video ads um, across YouTube and other display networks, but predominantly on YouTube, we find that um, in-stream skippable ads do really, really well with our clients. Uh, for, for us uh, and for a lot of the businesses, our clients that we look after, Google ads and the search network, so text-based ads work extremely well for converting um, for, for those clients, mainly because we focus on clients that are intentionally looking for a product or a service. Yeah. So with, with you know, Google, as you know, their whole intention is to satisfy the user's intent. And so with, with Google Ads, it's just great because you can get in at the top of the first page of Google by paying a bit of money. And you know, you're reaching those that are actually actively searching for that business, that product, that service. So for our clients, the number one strategy, just because we work with a lot of local service-based businesses, is Google Ads, focusing on the search network, so text-based ads. That works really well. Um, for other brands, e-commerce, um, and more domestic or international brands, we look at, we've found, uh, yeah, yeah, YouTube, so advertising across YouTube and the display network with video ads has been working really well. We haven't, we're not, doing too much with Facebook at the moment. We yeah. were doing a lot with Facebook, but just with all the changes, yeah. uh, we've found better results with YouTube. So we've just put a lot of energy into YouTube recently, um, Google ads um, in terms of yeah, those video ads. We still use YouTube, but at the moment, I think for us and our business, we focus on first, if we're um, you know, ranking them, would yeah. be 
would be YouTube then so Google ads um, video ads across YouTube display network then search based text ads on Google ads following that we would yeah uh, Facebook ads and for us we would just use single images a lot of the time we found that just works better in terms of the conversions that we were getting um, but yeah, those are probably the three core paid traffic sources we focus on at the moment. And then yeah. what about unpaid traffic? Unpaid traffic. So unpaid traffic for our business is YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where most of our traffic is coming from. And then also just through um, ranking posts. So on our website, SEO, we generate a lot of leads through that at the moment. We're putting a lot of energy into um, SEO for search engine optimization for our website. Uh, but at the moment, the majority of our traffic, which is around, um, you know, we're getting about 15,000 views per day through YouTube. And a lot of those are heading to our website or other different channels that we own, our different um, platforms that we manage. And yeah, and that just does really well at generating leads all across the country, uh, all across the, the globe, usually from the US, Canada and Australia, we get most of our leads from. Uh, but yeah, and then I think, yeah, so that would be YouTube, <laughs> organic uh, macro content on YouTube and then Google. Um, so just SEO. Yeah. And to be fair, a lot of our videos rank high on Google search as well. And that's a great thing. You're leveraging both Google search and then YouTube. Yeah. So the two biggest search engines in the world, which is quite good. And yeah, so, so YouTube and then Google, just SEO. And for our clients, yeah, again, mainly SEO, mainly SEO. So just because a lot of the time it's, it's clients, um, potential customers that are searching for particular products or services. And that's why we try and rank them high on, on Google, usually just Google. <laughs> we focus on Google, but yeah. <laughs> quite specific people who are looking for a specific product or service it's a little bit easier to rank for like exactly that um what do you recommend for people who are in more of a consultancy position so they are digital marketers and that's the service they offer how do you suggest that they go about ranking on google yep so what i would do if you're in you were a consultancy so you wanted maybe one-on-one -on -one consultations those kind of bookings or you're running webinars uh or some kind of online class course then for advertising again i would build a brand around that so and if, if, a, if a client of ours is looking to build a brand long term we look at youtube as kind of a pillar the foundation to building that brand and then the website as well so ranking high on google with seo and in terms of driving traffic um so if it's a, if it's consultancy, then I mean, the platform that you would use is, is if you're just doing consultancy work, then a funnel would work really well. A funnel would, would work really well. Um, but in terms of the traffic, again, yeah, we would use, I mean, that's what we use to drive our consultations um, is, is just YouTube and Google. It's just where you get the majority of the traffic, I think, because that's, we get macro traffic from those sources. Mm -hmm. And then we get leads out of those. Um, yeah, we, we don't, for our business, we don't do much paid stuff because organically we're doing so well. So yes. we've just pulled back completely in all our uh, advertising campaigns that we were running when trying to grow the business earlier. Okay. Yeah. And then you offer a $5 community subscription as um, one of the offers that you have on your website. Um, how do you find that a lower ticket offer like that works? Um, are you trying to build a community? What is your goal there? Yep, so we haven't been pushing that too much, uh, but again, that organically grows just from the nature of all the, all the traffic that we're generating. And our website for uh, that brand, so at the moment we've got Stuart Gold, which is kind of the macro brand, the personal brand that I predominantly manage. Then we've got Cindio Media, which is the local agency where we have our back-end team and we work with clients directly. So with um, Stuart Gould, and that's driving the majority of the traffic, and that's where the, the, um, the $5 consultation is. It's, we, we market it as like some kind of um, 
Uh, it's an exclusive community group for small business owners that are looking for advice, um, you know, tools, uh, looking to learn and upskill and really looking to transition online. And they've got a community to do that through that uh, channel. And it's, it's good. So that's organically growing. We haven't put much of a plan in place in terms of growing that long term. Um, at the moment, it's, it's just growing organically and naturally. But eventually what we're going to have to do, because at the moment, I'm just running that. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of responding to people, because I enjoy doing that, uh, that's more of a, I guess, a passion because I love working one-on-one -on -one with business owners. It's, it's just so much fun when you can actually sit down with business owners and with the app, it just makes it more um, accessible to most people. And so with, with that, we will eventually have to get um, another person on board to manage as admin to respond um, and to help out. But it's quite good because it's, it's, yeah, like you said, it's a low cost way that individuals can reach out to us rather than paying for a full one hour or 45 minute consultation. They can reach out, they can ask a question or two uh, and they always have that in their pocket through the app and they can you know, ask questions when they like, if they need any help with anything. And it's more personal. Um, whereas I try and respond to all, all the YouTube comments. Yeah. Um, our team tries to respond to all of those, but sometimes it's just, it's just too hard. So we try and funnel people through to that because that way people are more committed to actually executing on the advice that we're providing as well because they've got yeah. skin in the game, they're actually paying monthly for it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been really good. Again, that initiative we launched about a year ago now. Okay, yeah. and it's doing quite well. Um, I think that's a fantastic way to kind of leverage this membership side because they were more popular and they've kind of fallen a little bit out of popularity, but the way that you're approaching it and kind of, like you said, getting their skin in the game kind of, it costs them a little bit to ask these yeah. questions. So they're, they're kind of pushed harder to implement the advice you're giving. You're not just putting it there on YouTube and they're like, oh, cool, you replied. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so we're, we're trying to create a bit more engagement. So that channel itself doesn't have too much engagement. People will ask one question and then they, they might ask another question six months later or they'll never ask a question, but they're still paying the $5 membership every month. So yeah. we're trying to stimulate that engagement because a lot of people, it's, I mean, it's only $5, yeah. but I mean, you can scale that, you know, quite, quite easily yeah. and generate quite significant money through that. Um, but yeah, so we want to, that's kind of a focus for that channel is to try and create a bit more engagement mm. so that we can actually actively help and, and provide the right solutions to those with the, the, um, with pain points. Yeah, definitely. And then let's dig into social media a little bit. Um, how did you go about initially growing your YouTube following? Because I think a lot of people start out on YouTube and they feel like they're shouting in the dark. There's no one there. And how do you go about pointing people to your presence? What do you do? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so starting out, uh, it's a big world. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely when starting out, especially on YouTube, and it's it's similar to Google in the sense that YouTube his intention is to satisfy the user's intent. They want to keep people on the platform watching content. They just want to drive watch time. And so they want to keep people on YouTube. So how can you do that? Well, you can focus on two things. You can either focus on education or you can focus on entertainment. And those are really the two areas. So with education, it's more search content. So people are searching for your type of content, whereas entertainment is more suggested content so youtube will suggest it and that's how you get you know millions of views because the youtube gods push your content to yeah, random everyone video. <laughs> uh, yeah exactly so so you got to figure out exactly if you're in education or entertainment you can also be in both which is great if you've got a personality and you're providing education then you can actually achieve both those things uh for stuart gold we just purely focus on education so that's the core purpose of that channel is to pro provide digital media and marketing uh, knowledge, tools and skills for small business owners so they can take control of their own marketing and things like that. And so that's just search based. Now, when you're getting started, once you identify what you're doing, you've just got to build a content plan in place and you, you just slowly get better. So when you first record your first video, it's going to be terrible. It always is. <laughs> but you're just going to get better and you're going to slowly build that audience and those people that truly enjoy watching your content and that can connect or resonate with you will continue with you 
throughout that journey. And so, yeah, getting started is always really hard. Um, I mean, it took, yeah, probably a year before we even hit. Uh, I don't think we were even monetized. I think it was just after a year when we hit a thousand subs and 4,000 hours of watch time, which is when you can get monetized. Oh, cool. uh, and that's when you're monetized, you just start scaling a lot faster because obviously there's ads on your video. So you're getting paid, Google's getting paid, they take a portion. Um, so there's more, we believe there's more um, incentive for YouTube, Google to push your content because it's making money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, getting started, I, I recommend putting in a plan in place and sticking to it and then reviewing it, just like building a brand long-term. If you're thinking of creating a brand through YouTube, you want to grow a channel, then you want to focus on at least 12 months to begin with, at least 12 months. If you're posting one video a week or two videos a week, then do that consistently for 12 months. Then review, are you seeing the growth that you want? Do you think you need to change your channel slightly? Can you not pump out as much content as you can? You just don't have the capacity, then bring it back and review. But you definitely need to be consistent uh, because YouTube obviously likes that consistency. They give you authority and credibility, but also personally, you do just get better naturally when you're being consistent. You know, each video, you, you realize what's slightly off, you get slightly better, you get feedback from your viewers, and you naturally slowly just get better. So, yeah, just decide if you're, sorry, I'm dragging this out, but no, no, decide if you're in, <laughs> yeah, decide if you're um, in educational entertainment, are you creating search-related content or bingey kind of, uh, uh, you know, entertainment suggested-based content, and then figure out a plan. Can you post once or twice a week? and be consistent for a long period of time, review and continue doing that with that plan. Yes, yeah, so that's probably my advice I'd give. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. And I think um, it is very true, even personally working with this channel now and like taking over the podcast in the last couple of months, because we are posting between two and three times a week and I'm trying now for three to be more consistent and get it going. Um, the subscribers are up, people are enjoying it. The watch time's doing really well. The views on the YouTube videos are getting really good. I'm trying to focus on doing these longer episodes plus shorts that are like little bites of education. And the consistency is paying off. I think we're gonna reach a thousand subscribers soon, which is really exciting. Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's always exciting when you when you monetize the channel for the first time. Um, we've we've I've actually got three channels. <laughs> um, I've got two two that are monetized. Um, one's one's purely entertainment, and the other one's education. So Stuart Gould is education for business owners, and then the other one is actually got an Indonesian audience because I speak Indonesian. Oh, cool. Random fact. Random <laughs> fact. So that and that brand itself is uh, the long-term strategy with that is um, teaching business to Indonesians um, because it's such a big market and, and we enjoy Indonesia in general. We're going to move there soon, my partner and I. And so the long-term goal of that is to kind of um, connect the two brands together and build an audience through that. So yeah, one's more entertaining, the other one's education. But as soon as you get monetized, it's super exciting because you're like, whoa, a couple of dollars a day when you first start. And then you just see it grow. It's quite exciting. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. And then uh, you mentioned a little bit back where you're headed. You're off to Indonesia eventually. You're going to move there. So what does your future look like for you? What is the kind of medium term or long term goal you're looking to? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we've, we've got um, we've got a lot of different goals for different areas of the business. So with Cindio Media, which is the local agency, that's going to stay here. So we've got um, a local office here that's going to be well, it's actually a house because everyone works from home, but that um, kind of physical location is going to remain as we grow. And we've, I've got a team that can manage that from here. So with Cindio uh, Media, that's still going to grow. And with Stuart Gould, we're going to funnel those um, leads into Cindio Media still. Um, but I'm just going to be growing it from Indonesia, the channel, the brand, the personal brand um, and the business. And uh, for my personal kind of goal, uh, so the plan has been to move to Indonesia for the last four or five years. Yeah. It's been a long term goal. Uh, I just love the place. I love the people. I love the food. I love the culture. Um, everything about Indonesia is just amazing. 
And so I've been um, studying and learning the language with the long-term intention to be able to build a community over there and teach, um, you know, skills, knowledge, and tools to essentially help, you know, small businesses over there thrive online. Yeah. And there's a big market there for that uh, because a lot of these tools and information is not translated in Bahasa Indonesian. And so I feel like I can get in there and, and provide that education and entertainment. And, and I'm doing that at the moment, but I know I can grow it a lot faster when I'm based over there. Yeah. So that's going to be the long-term goal is to continue growing Stuart Gould is the number one kind of education platform to help small business owners execute and transition online by learning the skills, knowledge and tools. And then we're just going to do that with the Indonesian brand as well, which is what we're growing at the moment. So there's lots of like little micro goals and then yeah. like big picture macro goals too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, okay, in closing, I'm going to ask you a couple short questions. So is there one book or podcast or resource you could recommend to our listeners So someone just starting out? Yes, yes. So I have my current favorite book that I actually just finished. I uh, finished probably a couple months ago now, but it's, it's just incredible. It's called um, um, Pro -pro Procrastinate on Purpose. Oh, wow. Yeah. Five Permissions to Multiply Your Time by Rory Vaden. Okay. It's an exceptional book for anyone that wants to essentially maximize uh, and maximize and optimize their time in their personal lives as well as in their business. And it teaches you how to create leverage in your life, create leverage in your business by creating automation and by delegating and building systems. And that's exactly what kind of our team is focusing on at the moment is building systems and putting structures in place um, and kind of, you know, fully maximizing our time yeah. um, to tasks that are significant. But that would be the book. So yeah, by Rory Vaden, um, yeah, Procrastinate on Purpose. Podcasts, what have I been listening to recently? Oh, podcast. I listen to a bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, what have I been listening to recently? Um, oh, it's, it's lost me now. Um, oh, you're, I'll have to come back to you. It's yeah. gone. <laughs> it's gone. Um, I honestly listen to a bit of everything. <laughs> a bit of everything. I know, myself, I have a history podcast that I listen to. There's occasionally true crime when I'm at the gym. It makes me feel a little yeah. bit murdery when I'm trying to exercise. And then a couple of business ones, some really entertaining ones by someone, I think, who is a rapper giving business okay. advice. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the same. I'm, I'm more, yeah, a lot of investing stuff. So a lot yeah. of investing-based podcasts, because I enjoy listening to that. Um, a lot of marketing-based stuff and... Um, yeah, more just like entertaining, but interviews with highly successful people. There's just so many podcasts that host those. So I'll just type in, um, you know, like, for example, what um, we could think of someone. Um, uh, Richard Branson, for example, if I wanted to listen to a podcast about him, I'll type in his name. And there's just dozens of different um, podcasts uh, that, that interview him. So that's kind of what I do. I just type in names of people like Rory Vaden, for example, I just read his book. So I've been listening to all his, um, podcasts. Yeah. So I just jump all over the show, but, um, yeah. Um, I, I, I guess that's what I do. So I can't really give you a exact podcast. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. And then, um, looking back, is there any advice that you would give your 18 year old self? <laughs> <laughs> my 18 year old self uh yes a lot um one of those things which is just advice for me because i didn't get as much value out of it as i wanted to but if i could and i was 18 i probably wouldn't study what i did i probably wouldn't have done a four-year bms uh, bachelor of management studies um and gone to university and done that for four years because Basically, everything I've learned in my business today, I've had to learn on the go. It's through just personal education, personal development um, to get to where I am today. But the degree, I mean, you can argue and say it maybe set the foundation. It taught me how to learn under pressure or public speak, maybe public speaking. Uh, but yeah, I think I could have leveraged those four years a lot better yeah. rather than creating this debt that I had to pay off. 
um, and not going into a, into a job. So I think for me, university is great if you have a ideal job that you want out of it. But if you want to start your own business, you, you're better off diving into the education, following someone, working for people, and kind of um, just diving into that whole world of personal development. Yeah, that would be the biggest thing. And then just um, be believe in something and commit to it long term. In the early days at university and at school, I'd jump between different things. I was trying to start online and I didn't really commit to anything. The first thing I committed to was this business and then I committed to the channel and I learned to just believe in myself and commit to different um, tasks and activities and, and yeah, just follow through with those long-term, set up long-term goals and follow those through. Uh, yes, that's probably what I would say to my 18-year-old self. <laughs> Thank you. And then our last question is, where can our listeners find you? I will put your tags in our description. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me pretty much on all platforms at the moment. Um, YouTube is the most uh, profound channel where you can actually find valuable information. Um, if you're looking to set up a business online or you're looking to really optimize or take your business online with automation and di different digital activities. Um, so Stuart Gould is the channel name then we have just again um, a Facebook page for Stuart Gould, same Stuart H Gould, I think. LinkedIn is Stuart H Gould and Twitter, Stuart Gould. So, okay. yeah, pretty much all those platforms you type in Stuart Gould, you'll find me probably. <laughs> Perfect. Stuart, thank you so much for joining me and for giving us your time. And thank you to our listeners today. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this on a podcasting app, subscribe to the System podcast so that you never miss an episode. System is a digital marketing software platform packed with all the tools you need to grow your online business.